Well, Edwige Ortiz, you already know her. She is Strategic Alliance's leader at SAS and founder and president of Women for Cyber in Spain. And then we have Annette. Thank you for being with us. And Eva, can you see her? Can you see us? Yes, I can. Hello. How are you? Yes, we have Ana Yerbe. She's the director of the business area of Trustec of Technalia. And as I said, we have Annette. She is the president of Women for Cyber Foundation for Spain. And Eva Roman. She is the managing consultant for EMEA at Corn Ferry. So let's start since we have a panel, we have people on stage, and uh, then we have some people joining remotely. I'll start with Annette. Annette. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? Well, fine. We are here having a great day. And we, went, we wanted to greet you for being the president of Women for Cyber, and we wanted to ask you the first question. No? Women for Cyber is a private, non-profit European foundation whose objective is to promote, encourage, and support the participation of women in cybersecurity. Tell us a little more. Indeed, uh, Women for Cyber is a non-profit European private foundation. But before I start elaborating um, how the whole thing works and what's the rationale behind and how we would like to set the way forward, uh, first, let me express my, my honor for this invitation to be here um, today. Women for Cyber uh, Spain chapter is very important for the whole European cybersecurity community, especially that community that comprises women in the cybersecurity industry. So we are always very much keen to participate uh, in your events. Um, about the foundation, um, this is indeed a private foundation, but the initiative that it facilitates is not private. It's very much linked to two very important cybersecurity, let's say, related organizations in Europe. One is the European Commission. The European Commission is very much involved in uh, facilitating digitalization and cybersecurity in Europe on one hand. On the other hand, the initiative is linked to the European Cybersecurity Organization, which is responsible for facilitating industry participation in those policy making and other strategic processes, um, uh, decision support processes towards the Commission in cybersecurity that basically enable the whole European community, European cybersecurity community, to move forward to fulfill those goals uh, that are set for us for the current um, funding period uh, for the whole European Union. And for that, it's absolutely a key issue to facilitate young women um, to join the cybersecurity industry. Cybersecurity industry in general, just as in other continents or other regions of the globe, is suffering from the lack of necessary human resources. So what we primary co primarily concentrate on is to find those practical ways and operational ways how we could integrate more women, no matter whether those are junior or more senior, to get more involved in cybersecurity, um, to somehow tackle this lack of necessary human resources. For that, we actually set um, six um, high level um, areas where we are very active and where we see the key um, to, to facilitate this process properly. One of them, or the first one of these uh, target areas is basically facilitating a general awareness of the public of how cybersecurity important is. For that, uh, we target, um, or, or we, we sort of um, communicate, let's say that, because we collect these and, and try to disseminate as much as possible, those best practices that may enable or, or facilitate young ladies who have STEM education and also for those ones who do not have STEM education to join cybersecurity. And for that, we provide a, a, a certain role modeling campaign that I may elaborate later on as well. The second um, target area 
that we facilitate quite actively is to support and also to disseminate tailored training programs for women. At the moment, uh, we have a set mentorship program uh, for that, which is a one-to-one -one mentorship program. Both the mentors and the mentees can enter this program based on relevance and based on a certain uh, performance uh, questionnaire, let's say, which means that both the mentors and the mentees are selected carefully and we pay a lot of attention to match the best pairs, but we can, we can elaborate this a little bit more later on in the panel. The third key area uh, which we target is, is basically setting up the roadmap and the action plan on European level on how to facilitate women joining the cybersecurity uh, industry, especially through setting up a dedicated job market. Um, because what we see and what is also addressed in our roadmap uh, on which basis uh, the foundation and also the initiative actually works and operates is that there is a, there is a huge need for facilitating those processes which enable um, university students, um, post-university students just about to enter the cybersecurity job market and also those ones um, entering process who are already out in the job market, but they don't have relevant or significant experience. So we are still juniors and we aim to facilitate their progress uh, uh, on an operational level. The fourth key area uh, where we um, sort of focus on, uh, and here we are still counting on the community to, let's say, to, to show us the right best practices and, and the right ways to facilitate these properly, is basically the research and innovation area. There what we understand is that the participation of young women and, and, and senior women, who are cybersecurity experts in general, is quite low. And, and, and facilitating um, those processes, how, how more women could join those processes where emerging technologies are designed and implemented. And, and those challenging areas of cybersecurity are designed and implemented, like cybersecurity implementation of, of artificial intelligence or cybersecurity implementation of machine learning and so on and so forth. So there we, we still have to, to find the right way to, to facilitate this process properly. So we are absolutely keen to understand how you do it, for example, in the Spanish chapter, if you have any roadmap uh, actions related to this. Um, the fifth key area um, that we um, put a lot of attention on is basically the level or the area of formulating the relevant national policies that help and facilitate and assist local communities to set the way on policy level for young women joining the cybersecurity industry. Um, for this, uh, we collaborate a lot and liaise a lot with national administrations and also the local ICT associations who are in a position to influence local policy making. Um, local may mean regional uh, and also um, national um, in Europe because basically for the European digitalization, we have a lot of policies and a lot of, um, let's say, policy level instruments on European level that needs to be implemented on national level, but there is always room to adjust to local needs and, and local circumstances, let's say. So, so for this, we liaise with national administrations and, and, um, and regional administrations. Also, uh, our sixth key area is very much linked to this, uh, how we facilitate um, the, the operational uh, functioning, let's say, of the European um, Women for Cyber initiative is basically a very strong and continuous collaboration with the national chapters. 
By now, uh, through establishing national chapters in, in the European Union and beyond uh, the borders of the European Union, so basically all over in Europe as a continent, uh, we cover more than 60% of the whole geographical area. Uh, we have formal national chapters as partners, and we also have informal national chapters and partners, and we also have established partnership with, with other uh, ICT associations who also facilitate uh, fulfilling our roadmap. Um, and as, let's say, as, um, as an extra, we also have, a, let's say, a seventh area where we collaborate very strongly with the European Commission, we have a registry set up uh, for those women who have a strategic or operational role in the European cybersecurity arena and who are willing to provide their contacts publicly to facilitate participation in conferences, to facilitate uh, participation in workshops and in those public surfaces, let's say, where we could somehow facilitate uh, exchange of information related to how we could how we could uh, boost women participation in the cybersecurity industry in general so in a nutshell this is what we do and i'm looking forward to the other speakers uh, opinion on this and also uh, related to any questions you may have Thank you very much, Annette. Uh, you are doing a great work. And thank you very much for clarifying all these key areas of uh, this foundation, Women for Cyber. And we are sure that it's going to be very interesting for uh, the next uh, speaker, that is Edu Vigis. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, we know we are, you are connected uh, from Hungary. So uh, technology <laughs> keeps, uh, keeps us connected. Uh, we are, I'm going to talk with the other two speakers here and with Eva. Thank you very much. We'll be with you in a while. Eduigi, eh, bueno, nos han contado pues, prácticamente todo lo relacionado <laughs> con, la, con esta iniciativa, así que no sé si te va a quedar mucho que contarnos. Pero cuéntanos, ¿en qué consiste el capítulo de Women for Cyber en España? Bueno, parece que no, pero tenemos mucho que contar, Dipak, <laughs> eh, Anet. Uh, thank you for being here, sharing with us. Hope next year you can be here, sit uh, in, in the uh, scenario with us. It would be uh, nice. So please, save the date. <laughs> uh, bueno, vamos a cambiar y vamos a contar lo que hacemos desde Women for Cyber Spain que justo hace un año aquí en León hicimos el lanzamiento en el NIC 14 y podemos hacer un balance de lo que ha sido este año eh, gracias a la maravillosa junta que tenemos, que aquí eh, hay algunas representantes como Eva, como Ana, como nuestras vicepresidentas Rosa, Idoya, Mar, que ha estado aquí en el ENICE, socias como la que han estado participando, como Esther, Mateo y Elena Matilla y tantas otras eh, mujeres que son referentes en el mercado de la ciberseguridad. Y, eh, yo puedo decir que estoy muy contenta personalmente y como organización estamos... Eh... We are highly satisfied of what we have achieved this year. We have uh, already done many things. Uh, we know there is a long way to go, but we also have to look back sometimes and celebrate what we have done and what we have achieved. Over the course of this last year, we've uh, had uh, a very important support from many institutions, associations, businesses who have become partners of Women for Cyber, cyber. Uh, even uh, individual professionals who also became partners, men who wanted to support and become partners of Women for Cyber. We have more than 10 continuous um, partners and cooperators. We do uh, devote many hours of training and of work in order to continue to uh, develop our initiative because we firmly believe that if you want to make a change, you have to do it yourself. Each and every of us can be uh, an agent uh, for change. Uh, we want uh, to have a fairer world and more inclusive. Uh, cybersecurity world, and that's why we pledge our efforts 
to work on all the lines that Annette mentioned, but in Spain we have focused ourselves and narrowed, narrowed it down on uh, to, to five lines, uh, some of which are the same as those Annette uh, said, but in others we give it that Spanish flavor. So we are based on five lines, communicating. We know that it is really important to disseminate what we do as uh, cybersecurity professionals because uh, very often there are stereotypes, uh, prejudices uh, about what society think we do in the world of technology and cyber security in particular. And that is something we do. We uh, take part in many events and we promote uh, within different institutions, at uni universities, by sharing our experience, by um, delivering talks, by showing the projects we do, like the cybersecurity culture that Stead has just told us about at ADIF. This inspires other companies uh, and other groups to think that the culture around cybersecurity is important, that we must be cyber secured by design, that every day we wake up and we are connected to all the whole range of devices that we have available to us, and we must therefore be aware of the risks around us. And uh, for that communication, we rely on different uh, media, uh, we have the people from uh, the different uh, cybersecurity, IT digital security uh, magazine and newsletter, Monica herself with Big Delph. Uh, we have different media that uh, help us get the message across uh, to, uh, since women from an early age, we need uh, to be part of this world and to be interested and uh, attracted to this uh, world. So that communication where we rely on the media, it is so important to raise awareness. This is something we have been working on. We have a, a panel uh, for discussion. We cooperate with different media, uh, with interviews, articles, so that the voice of the experts is present and so that everybody can see that women uh, have a lot to say in this uh, industry and this is exactly what we need. We have reference and uh, we need to be visible as uh, professionals. So that's the second part, communicating, then visualizing to inspire those uh, young girls and women so that when they get to second sec secondary education or high education, they can decide to uh, uh, pursue a career in uh, cybersecurity. We always say, I started in cybersecurity when we were only 11% and now we are 24%, so we have more than doubled our percentage in terms of our presence in cybersecurity. So clearly what we are doing is having an effect and we are getting there, but uh, still 24% uh, of the whole workforce of uh, uh, the sector when we actually account for 52% of the whole population is telling you that we still have a long way to go and this is what we are doing. So that's why from uh, Women for Cyber we work on inspiration. Every first Wednesday of uh, the month we have an inspirational talk. Uh, sharing the experience and the background of a, uh, a referential woman in order to create that uh, situation uh, to facilitate women who want to change uh, their careers. Then we have uh, training activities. Again, I will not uh, give away much of what Anna has to say. She is responsible for everything related to academia, uh, research and, uh, inf and innovation and also accompanying people with those mentoring programs that have been mentioned in order to help women who are already working in the sector and uh, being with them hand in hand with the experience of the people we have around us, with uh, a lot of CISOs, many of them uh, many of whom are men, who want to be part of this uh, activities. 
and I would let Eva and Anna also room so they can tell us what we do in the association. But by way of conclusion, Deepak, we can say that we are really satisfied of what we have done in this first year in Wim for Cyber Spain. And of course, we rely on all of you to continue to make progress along the way in the coming years. Thank you. Yes, no doubt. Thank you. We do, you do so much. I was going to ask you what your chapter is all about and what are your activities, but you have already told us everything. Well, I suppose there are mo many more things. But Anna, can you tell us a little bit more specifically about uh, training, as Edwig has just said, and the programs you have so that everybody can know a little bit better? Yes, thank you. It is a great pleasure to be here among girlfriends and also male friends. And, well, uh, talking about the activities we do uh, as part of the Women for Cyber Spain initiative for research and development and innovation, I would like to um, insist that it is essential to capture uh, young uh, women and girls in the early stages, but it is also important to keep them active, so to speak, along the whole life cycle, because we are losing these girls, we are losing teenage girls, and then we are losing professional women. Uh, during the life cycle. So we need to do actions from all points of view. And if we are to speak really about the issue of the participation of women in cybersecurity, uh, this is part of an added problem. Uh, how we make uh, technical careers more attractive, both for men and women. We have less and less people joining technical studies, and in the particular case of women, this is even more severe. But if we talk about R and D and I, the percentages are even lower. We need to make R and D and I attractive for women. And in that case, we have certain difficulties. Um, and it is not only seen as something complex and highly technical. Um, people say, well, it's cyber, but also it is research and development, innovation, um, technological innovation. We have to fight several stereotypes, a total lack of models. And if you think about all the uh, telecom companies and the news that we see on the media, you will see that there are no women within the main technological companies worldwide. And whether we want it or not, what do we want? We want our girls not to listen to these news? They are going to get the story. They know far too well who is at the front, for, forefront of Facebook, who is leading Amazon. They know that far too well. So uh, trying to talk to them about women, about real women, who are managers at uh, technological companies, you, this is something you have to really struggle. But going back to uh, research and development and the activities that we are doing, well, I can tell you that we're also trying to uh, establish alliances with initiatives that are working around capturing uh, female talent in the early stages. Because some t before, we have heard how we normally lose girls in the teenage years, when they are 12, 13. So you have to do the actions earlier, when they are just 10 or 11. And this uh, coincides with something very clearly. That's uh, secondary education. And this is when mathematics uh, change. They start talking about equations. And if they are lost, when the moment you start talking about equations, then they're going to be lost for good uh, with regard to mathematics. So it is fundamental to, 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 to act on that uh, part of the education uh, cycle. But once we enter trying to promote those vocations and trainings uh, uh, and try to attract them to technical studies, 
with a different uh, degree courses. Well, uh, in Women for Cyber, we are working with different uh, university, uh, having a clear interest in promoting the development of uh, women's capacities around cyber in order to set a joint uh, training program that allow us to pave the way uh, to prepare the future professionals that both businesses uh, will require and also to try and promote uh, the presence in uh, research and development. So this year we worked with the University of Avila on a course specialized on cybersecurity where we covered the different stages because we need to make it visible that uh, cybersecurity is not only about technology. We also talk about people, about processes, and there are very many disciplines that might uh, have a role. And we need the right people also and there. So we need to continue to work very actively, just as we are doing with the different universities, promoting those specific trainings uh, by completing special actions also so that for the whole R&D part, uh, well, to make this uh, more attractive to them, this also requires uh, for more competitive uh, salaries uh, to try to eradicate the figure of the e eternal uh, practical uh, work uh, a practical experience a person uh, sometimes you have a picture of someone who is 30 odd already and they're still uh, very much uh, a student doing practical work uh, these are things that are important because uh, people are seeking stability at some point and uh, research and development might not look that attractive and they move towards other um, areas so I think with all these initiatives that we are working on, well, this is something we need to continue to work on. The problem is a complex one. It has very many different uh, aspects, and we have to act at every level. And let me just finish uh, with something. Uh, remote work that has been all the rage during the pandemic has also been a trap for women, because in many cases, the fact of being uh, working from home uh, meant that at the same time they had to attend to their children, uh, cooking, etc. So there is still a long way to go in uh, what relates to your life and work balance. Yes, uh, it's not always easy, is it? It is true that there is a mis um, an under-representation of talent. Uh, although the work you are doing is having already some effect. I would like to leave this question for Eva. She's joining remotely. Well, she's there. Eva, tell us about your opinion uh, on this issue. And welcome again. Yes, my pleasure. It's uh, a pleasure to be here. So, Can you hear me correctly? Yes. Okay, perfect. So the underrepresentation is something that my colleagues have already pointed out. There is a, a, a long standing problem with regard to young women and teenagers who might choose studies in cybersecurity. There is a great and severe lack of understanding. I have worked in uh, technology and cybersecurity. I have worked there for many years, but uh, maybe compared with my uh, colleagues, not so long. Cybersecurity, I can tell you, is a world that, generally speaking, uh, is not uh, very well known uh, to those who are not involved in technical uh, studies or areas. So here there is an important problem, and just as Anna pointed out, the different stages in the education uh, system where there is no adequate uh, student uh, orientation and no, uh, they are not accompanied somehow and they are demotivated when it comes to making decisions because of the uh, constraints of the actual education system. This is one of the main issues to find. And then something else that we find uh, 
something that we do in Wind for Cyber and which I am in charge of directly is everything related to HR. Uh, here we have also a, a, an important lack of women. At the end of the day, women do have a vital role in incorporating new talent to, uh, in cybersecurity. Uh, and however, there has been uh, some distancing and up to date. Uh, him of resources in many companies did not have any knowledge about the sector uh, they didn't know what platforms for uh, or communities uh, they should be looking at they didn't even know some of the roles involved so uh, cyber security has uh, come out of the blue for many and there has not been uh, right uh, training with regard to visibility, attraction, retention and development of the professionals themselves. So uh, as part of Women for Cyber, we did consider that it would be important to work around human resources, help the human resources community be closer to these professionals to aid their understanding, to make uh, the processes more inclusive, to um, help them contribute uh, to uh, career changes uh, for a better development, better understanding of everything that's involved and also uh, help them attract a large number of women to their organizations because simply just in the way some job offers are uh, published, it, it, it doesn't really, uh, well it puts you off in many cases uh, when you are a woman. So. Uh, the role of uh, Women for Cyber with regard to HR is working with the HR community, help their policies uh, be more diverse and inclusive, uh, particularly related to attraction, retention and development of the talent, and then working with the women, the, the women themselves. We accompany them, we do some mentoring activities as uh, Edu and Annette pointed out, and then with a series of other initiatives which are also important. Uh, there is a series of uh, actions that uh, uh, kind of uh, act as a barrier. We have uh, prejudices, we have uh, certain situations that make it difficult for us to access uh, r roles of responsibility. So our role uh, from Women for Cyber is to accompany women with uh, activities, seminars, workshops to help these women achieve their goals, both women and female students, because it is important, as Anna said, and we have other colleagues working with young talent, our role is to help and to promote female students so that they can have a better orientation, better uh, employment perspectives and a clearer picture of what's in store for them. So we are making progress slowly but surely and we are trying to make that percentage of uh, women uh, increasingly larger. And I must say that we are contacted by a growing number of women who are not part of cyber but who would like to be part of the cyber community. There is barely no unemployment, so there is just barely not point something percent of unemployment, uh, and we are trying to contribute to see what ways there are so that uh, these women can uh, have that career change. Thank you, Eva. Well, some of the things that you are talking about do apply to your profession uh, in general. Mr. Matteo referred to uh, hoods, uh, uh, to you know how we tend to think that there are freaks uh, in this career. In our sector, this is the way it has always been. So I think it is everybody's responsibility to make cybersecurity more and more attractive and also based on the popularity of the incidents, hackers, and all the work we do in a joint manner, I am sure we will actually achieve that goal. In this regard, I would like to ask you, in a free way now, you may intervene whenever you want, Eva, Annette also if you want, but I would like to ask you whether you believe that uh, what are you doing to attract those young girls and women 
uh, towards uh, not only cybersecurity but technology in general. Well, this is an area where we can share the actions that we do. One of the lines of work that we do together with a colleague, Begoña Pérez, who works at BBVA Bank uh, around cybersecurity to try to expand and get closer uh, to the uh, actual workers of the banks and to the customers. And she works with the organizations that we have uh, our partnerships with, such as Binary Girls, STEM Talent Girl, and these are organizations that have access to these uh, girls, these young girls, because as you know, in order to work with schools, so you uh, need to have uh, th that part very well organized. And we team up with them to make progress along those lines. I would say whenever we are doing a, a workshop on robotics and uh, artificial intelligence, uh, cybersecurity, let's have that element in it. Let's uh, have cybersecurity and show that this is a, a, a vital pillar and that we can all be part of it. Uh, from the moment they connect to any device. Uh, so these actions that we uh, contribute to and that we uh, are part of with our mentors and by doing and delivering talks to change people from the early stages, because at the end of the day that what we want to do is to grow that um, professional base. And uh, so when we get wherever is, uh, we have people who wants to who want to change their career or develop their career around cybersecurity because they want to make it big there and it is then when we also continue to accompany them and we walk uh, that path together but when it comes to the culture and changing cultures we have to do this at all levels and just as Annette pointed out one of the lines that we work on which is influencing at the political level and at the institutional level by mm, including uh, topics and subjects at primary education that are related, related to cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, because these are the competences that we're going to need for all types of jobs. So not only for girls, uh, also as you mentioned, BPAC, uh, for everyone, for the whole society. I'm not sure whether you want to add something to that, Anna. Yes, I would like to add, well, apart from all you said when you talked about uh, making it visible, making visible the different profiles that are necessary for cybersecurity to make people see that there are women across all those different profiles, the relevance of the mentoring uh, activities for everyone and at all levels. In Technalia, we have a mentoring program And I wasn't part of this uh, initially because I was working uh, elsewhere. However, a female researcher in artificial intelligence said that she wanted me to be her mentor. And that was only because she uh, because the way she used to manage her projects was different. The way I managed was different from that of my colleagues. So she wanted to see with me how she could go around it. So I was really delighted, I must say, but I was also quite scared about it. Uh, I believe that uh, mentoring is very much necessary and required, as Annette mentioned before. Also, this has been done at the European level. And in research and development, we also need to think about cooperation and partnership because in different fora I found a situation where there were girls and women who said, well, I managed to get where I am uh, on my own uh, means. So what barriers do the rest of the women find then? Uh, I believe we need to think that although there may have been some fortunate people who have made it on their own right. Others have had to struggle and fight a lot in order to be where they are. And many have not even been able to make it. So, and 
the figures, the data are very clear. This is not getting anywhere. This is not getting any better. Uh, it is uh, rather getting worse, and we need to do something because uh, if we fail to do anything, this is not going to improve. When I finished my IT studies uh, many, many years ago, there were 40 percent. Uh, we were 40 percent of women which is not bad at all for those times. Now we're talking about very low percentages, under 20%, 15% maybe, in some uh, particular studies. So I wonder what has happened in these uh, past years. And then something important, we cannot do this without men. Yes, I saw you have a look at the time. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. You talked about the struggle, about... Um, fighting using your own means and indeed I believe that uh, whatever you can do uh, to uh, increase that figure, that percentage uh, will be uh, very positive and indeed we are seeing how positive it is what Women for Science does. I would like to thank you all for uh, being here, for the work that you are doing and for the way and the enthusiasm and the passion you communicate about it because at the end of the day that's what it's all about, passion. Uh, life is uh, a constant fight, as we know, and this is something which is uh, inherent uh, to our world. And with us, there's no time for more interventions. You told us very deeply about what are you doing in Europe. Thank you very much. Like uh, we said, hope you can be with us the next year, and we can meet here in the real world. Gracias, Eva, también por estar con nosotros. Y nada, muchísimas gracias a, a todos vosotros por seguir este panel. Thank you. Anna and Eva, and thank you all for being here with us in this panel. Thank you.